Well, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a look today at the type 1 projectile motion problems. Um, these are horizontal launches. So this could be anything from um, a car driving off a cliff to a rock being thrown horizontally off a building. Um, the keywords to look for to sort of determine if one of the projectile problems is one of these um, thrown horizontally, launched horizontally, uh, driven off, rolled off. Um, anything that is indicating to you that it's the object is starting with a velocity that is just horizontally. So for instance, um, we've got this ball that is rolled off a table with a velocity of 5 meters per second. If the table is 1.5 meters tall, how far away did the ball hit the ground? So I first like to just um, draw a little diagram. So here we have um, a table. Let's see if I can get to do what I want. There we go. And it is uh, 1.5 meters off the ground. And we've got this ball that rolls just horizontally at 5 meters per second. And it goes through this nice projectile parabolic motion till it hits the ground. And we are worried about what this value is, that delta x. So I'm going to set up one of my tables. Again, I like these uh, very much. I apologize about my handwriting. I'm using um, my laptop with a stylus instead of the normal smart board, so bear with me. I've got delta v naught, v f, a, and t. So for all projectile type problems, we know that our values for the acceleration is x. Um, we're not changing our velocity at all in the x direction. And for y, it's 10. Now, it could be either positive or negative. Here, for these type 1 problems, I like to make it positive because everything about this problem vertically is down. I'm not going up at all, so that way I can just make everything uh, a positive number and leave it as is. So the biggest thing here to realize, if we are rolling a ball just horizontally off a table, it's not moving up or down at all when it finally gets off that table. So our initial velocity in the y direction is going to be 0. These three variables, you don't need to have any given information from the problem. As long as you recognize that it's this type 1, this horizontal launch, these three are true. Then we go back into the problem and say, all right, what other information do I know? Well, I know the table is 1.5 meters tall. That means my ball is going to fall 1.5 meters. That's my delta y. That's the height. And it says it's rolled off the table by a velocity of five meters per second. So I put that in for the initial velocity in the x direction. That is also the initial velocity, or I'm sorry, the final velocity in the x direction. Because we're not accelerating accelerating at all, anywhere in that problem, it will have the exact same velocity. So five throughout. So now I want to set up an equation. The value that I'm looking for is delta x. So I'm going to set up delta x equals v naught t. That's the only equation I have in the x direction. Um, so if I start filling in numbers, delta x is what I'm looking for. My initial velocity is 5, but I don't know what my t is. I don't know how long it takes. So I'm going to actually switch over to the y direction to solve for time. So I've got these three variables, delta, v naught, a, and I'm looking for t. So my best equation there is going to be delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. I start plugging in 1.5 equals zero times t. That's helpful. Plus one half the acceleration, which is 10, and then t squared. So if I multiply by two and divide by 10, um, I'm going to get 0.3, and that equals t squared. And I need to go ahead and get the square root of 0.3. Let me get my calculator out. Give me one second. Should have been prepared for that. Calculator, calculator. So we've got 0.3, and then we're going to take, oh, I need to get a scientific calculator. There we go. So if I do 0.3 and take the square root of it, I end up with a value of 0.55 if I round it. So my time is 0.55 seconds. So 
So now that I have the time, I can go back into this first equation and plug it in. So let me erase that placeholder T. And we've got 0.55. So 5 times 0.55 gets me a value of 2.74 meters. And that's the problem. So again, the things to be careful of uh, with these and with all of the uh, projectile motion is, number one, set up this chart. It makes keeping all of your data organized very easy. And that's important because we want to make sure that we have only Y values when we go into an equation or only X values. We can't mix up the two. I can't use uh, the acceleration in the X, or uh, sorry, the acceleration in the Y with the velocity in the X. I have to keep those completely separate from one another. The second thing to be careful of is to make sure that you've got the right values to start with, recognizing that if we've got this type one problem, then our initial Y velocity has got to be zero. And then it's just kinematics. The big thing with that is to make sure that a lot of the times you're going to find time first and then use that to find a value in the X direction. So in the next video, we'll take a look at the type two, the highest point problems. A lot of the processes are the exact same. We just start with some different initial values that we know.